What was left unscratched was just the form of Dhyanalinga exactly, the same exact proportion. <laughs> but she was trying to make a picture of me, different kinds of images or two different kinds of consecrations. One is just a reverberation. You can... you can even make this vessel reverberate, but uh, you cannot access this vessel from elsewhere because it's simply reverberating without specificity of what it intends to do. It has no intention or intelligence. But consecrations which are as complex as the Devi or much more with the Dhyana Linga is... They are not limited by physical space, wherever you are. If your doors are open, it's available. Many, many people... The first time it happened in United States, I think this was just the second program, inner engineering program we were doing. Uh, there was a lady who was involved in all kinds of, uh, you know, whatever certain type of work from Caribbean islands. She went on doing something with her pencil in the book. You know we have a problem with people taking down notes. I said, no, you cannot take notes, just be with me. She will be looking at me, not even looking at the book, just looking at me and just doing this with her pencil. Then uh, at the end of the three-hour session, she said, I don't know why this came, something came out of this and this is the thing that... you know, the form that came out of me. I didn't know what happened as I was looking at you, I was trying to sketch you, but this is what I got. It's a clear proportion of the Dhyanalinga. She just got the image of Dhyanalinga, like she completely... the whole page she scratched with her pencil, what was left unscratched was just the form of Dhyana Linga exactly, the same exact proportion. <laughs> but she was trying to make a picture of me. So I'm telling you, consecrated forms are not limited to its physical space. As Dhyana Linga is not a particular physical form, but it's an energy form which defies time and space. So if one is uh, willing, it's available to you wherever you are. But still that may sound very abstract for many of you. So uh, I would say it's best if you've made at least one visit, if you've beheld the Analinga, if you've sat there, the sowing of the spiritual seed through the Dhyanalinga will anyway happen within you. and. Uh, if you just uh, fix a certain time for yourself, preferably in the morning or evening, and simply sit quietly, the energy of Dhyanalinga will definitely envelop you from within. And if you need some visual help, you can always have an image or a yantra, which will give you the necessary support. But all these supports are only because one is psychologically distracted. Otherwise, none of these are needed. The sowing of the spiritual seed that happens, by being in the presence will take care of this anyway. But if you need support, you can always have visual, visual support or uh, even the mantra, you know, a CD being played or something like this which will give you the necessary auditory support. But essentially, if you just keep one space in your house and simply sit quietly, you should feel that space from within yourself. Uh, if you have been in that space, even if you have not in, been in that space, it is possible, but you must be in a certain level of receptivity which may not be possible for everyone.